Good morning, and welcome to the wonderful world of Des Moines. Now just sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. There you go. Okay. Hello. Hello. Welcome to Bourbon 101. <laughs> Today's subject... Well, wait a minute. That's not this one. <laughs> <laughs> Wrong vlog. <laughs> and you're not doing a yeah. bourbon vlog tonight, nope, right? Nope. Not going to do it. <laughs> He's refusing, um, but there will be another one coming soon. We we'll probably just won't do that every day, but definitely at least a couple of times a week. I haven't even had a sip of bourbon for, man. Well, for sure you're going to do one Saturday night when Rich is here. So we have a lot of bourbon questions to answer, or I should say Joe does. Yeah, we might run that. That video might be an hour and a half long. You never know. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna save them all for yeah. one video that's what we should do we should uh rich and i will look into it and maybe we'll live stream it sometime so well, there you go that's a good so idea that, and then you could answer yeah. questions during well, the video well here's one thing we could do we could we could put out the a couple of the bourbons we're gonna taste and then give you a week or so if you want to go out and purchase one to and you could sip along and people will be able to give their their live uh recommendations on it too okay let us know your opinion on that <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or if you're interested in that yeah, but I, moving right along i have no idea what, how to do live streams so we'd have to look all that up <laughs> yes that's true <laughs> um we got a question how do you stay calm during a meltdown and essentially <laughs> my answer is i don't i mean I try to always speak in a quiet voice. I'm not a yeller anyway. I don't like yelling. I don't like being yelled at. So I don't yell at my kids. I hold um, I hold more of a temper. I, I wish I didn't, but so I sometimes I try to excuse me. I'll try to overpower it with overpowering it, and that does not work nope. very well. But it's it's instinct. It's hard to it's hard to to not do that. You know, we were talking well, you want to end. You want to, yeah. You just want it to end right now because you're in public and you don't want people to see yeah. Craig acting like that. And yeah, meltdowns at home are one thing. You yeah, can, that's you totally can let different. you know get. We give him, we give him his time, mm -hmm. and I'll, I'll like if he's having a meltdown and we're downstairs, I'll demand Craig, you need to go to your room. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and that usually helps a lot. Yeah, and and then he he'll get mad and stomp up and he'll he'll call me a crazy baboon or something <laughs> yeah, like that that's true. <laughs> and, and uh, i can't remember the he's got a rant that he, yes. he does when yep. he's when he's angry mm -hmm. at me mm -hmm. but and then he'll calm down but in public you don't have that kind of time you don't have that luxury you don't you know so there's this you have so few choices when you're in public and to me the only real choice that works is just to get yourselves out of that situation. Yeah, it's like it's, when when we were in Disney World and at Magic Kingdom and stayed for the fireworks and it was so crowded oh gosh, afterwards. That was horrible. And it was an absolute nightmare. And we just had to flip the coin. Do we take? Do we try to go to the the monorail, which looked like it had a humongous group of people, or down to the to the ferry boats? Well, I decided. I made the decision. We went for the ferry boats. And it was just too crowded for too long. Mm -hmm. And it, it, we just about couldn't get out of there. And Craig, he, you know, he was just completely at his wits end and everything. Mm -hmm. And drawing a lot of attention to himself, and which wasn't good and everything. So uh, since we've been home, I, made, I did some research and everything. And it turns out we can actually hire one of the, what they call the mini the minivans, it's mini mouse vans that they've got there. And we can get that from where the buses pick up at Magic Kingdom. They actually got a small spot there. They pick up like for buses that go, I believe, to the resorts. And you can, so we will be able to go over and it's expensive, but, and then it will take us to the ticket and transportation center instead of those two things. Or we could go over and try to take the bus, which I've always heard that sometimes can be a little tricky yeah, too, yeah. but it's a, still a pain. And you know, I think we'll just we'll just spring for the money. I think if you have the choice between the bus, the monorail, 
and the ferry always take the monorail and here's why the monorail is a line and the line is always moving because the monorails go 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 yeah but the ferry you have to wait a bit there it's and in there, huge groups it, of people yeah it's like being in a room full of people and all squished together yeah and that just and it's they kept, not good they keep trying everybody move forward mm -hmm. everybody and yep you're like hey i'm gonna I'm gonna grab that finger away from me and I'm gonna have you move and forward. And it's very into the hard water. to get out of. Like <laughs> I wanted to get out of that situation. Oh. But it was we going were, to be very hard to get out of yeah, that. Yeah, because mess. we were so deep into it. That I mean, I bet we were uh, it, the whole crowd was probably twenty yards wide and it was huge. And I bet it I bet it was 50 yards long. And, and I you, feel like we stood had, there for at least half an hour. Yeah, yeah. Just Which, waiting. Some people say that's fast to get out of there, but it's not fast with mm -mm. an autistic it's, no. child. I feel like with so. Craig, you're best if you can keep moving. If he can feel like we're making progress. Yeah. And I think that would be true of many people. If you're claustrophobic or, you know, whatever other, your problem is. Our other thing is, is we, there's a good chance we'll never be at the park again when it closed. Yeah, I don't think we'll, you know. Yeah, I don't think that's a good idea for us. We only did that because of the ki other, our kids were there and everything. And, and they wanted to see the fireworks. Yeah. Which Craig loves the fireworks too. Mm -hmm. But just and we to set figure out a way a to. We did, we tried to wait it we out some, but I don't feel like that helped at all, I guess. No, so. I think we would have had to wait. We'd have had to wait in the park for at least another mm -hmm. hour. Yeah, and, and Craig was ready to go home. Yeah, he was tired. He'd been on his feet too long. So mm -hmm. yeah, when it's but. just you, me, and Craig, we won't ever stay for the fireworks for yep. sure. Yep. So, so, okay. So I guess that's the long and the short of it is we <laughs> we haven't found a way to stay really calm yet. At home we can, yeah. but out in public, it you just to me, I jump to the panic. I've got to stop this, yes. which is so unrealistic. And because... you're out with him by yourself a lot of times. Yes, yeah, it's both hard. of us. We're both there. I just take him. You, I take yeah. him out the van. Say, Craig, we're, we're done with this. Let's go. And then he might he might do some ranting, but at least I get him out of the building. Right. And get him back to where he can he can sit. He can he can look at his phone and. But I will say, if that happens again, I will abandon my car and we'll oh, just yeah. leave. I, would. I won't keep. They just kept saying, "No, wait, it won't be long." But I'll just, yeah. I'm just gonna have to stand firm and say, "We we can't wait." So, anyway, enough no. of that. Um, uh, I had a, a side note. I had a question from a viewer uh, because I used to work at a vet clinic. They wanted to know my feelings toward feral cats. Like, how do I why feel do they, about... Why do they name them Daryl? Feral. Oh. <laughs> feral cats. Like, if you don't know what that is, it's a cat that's just running in the wild. It doesn't have a home or an owner. It was probably bored in the wild. Yeah. Lives that's in what the I wild. Thought. I thought feral cats. Born in the wild. I, it's... <laughs> cats, Craig. <laughs> 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 Mowgli. Um, Wasn't it Mowgli? So, <laughs> Mowgli. which can be a problem for a, a lot of people. I actually grew up in the country and we had a lot of feral cats, I guess, but we actually calmed them. We tamed them uh, by feeding them. And their question is, how do you feel about feeding feral cats? Well, I don't know if it's right or wrong, but I would do it because I love cats. And yeah. I well, will always feed cats if I see them. We don't have, we don't, we have some we see on our ring cam at night, but we never see them during the day. So yeah. we and don't I, feed any of and them. And I think the reason that we see them is they're actually, they're not feral. They're barn cats. Yeah, we've they're, got, mm -hmm. we've got a few outbuildings of the, the mm -hmm. people next to us where the cell towers are to the west of us. Uh, then there's, there's outbuildings and they have horses over there. And they, so they've got stable type things. And they, I think they keep cats just to keep the mice down. Out yeah. of the they're such pretty cats too. Oh, they're yeah. not feral. Yeah, they're. Not, I don't think they're feral. Just they're just kind of little. We wild. even had one on our deck once. It was mm -hmm. so cute. I would yeah. have loved to fed that cat. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's what I'm. I'm glad they're they're very skittish, <laughs> or they'd be very. You're just as bad as me. <laughs> they'd be very ours, unfortunately. Um, uh, Nancy's nancy's dream as a kid was always to have a cat ranch. it was my dream to have a cat farm and yeah. to have all kinds of cats and to have a grandma kitty because i used to go and stay with some friends of ours during the summer and they had that they what is that there's a there's a book about that where the lady that has all those cats i don't know yeah 
think the book was the cover was like orange and black or something. Yeah, reason. I kind of remember that. And then they all get that. in a fight, and I, I think maybe they kill every all. They all kill each other except for one little kitten at the end. Kind of. I gave up that dream after working kind of at the morbid. vet clinic because after working there, tell and me what that book is. <laughs> In the comments. There was a number of people that had lots of barn cats and people that also fed feral cats. And then what happens is they all end up getting the ick, I call it. They mm -hmm. get like upper respiratory infections. My parents always called it distemper. However, not, it, wasn't um, it wasn't really distemper, I found out. It's, it's more like an upper respiratory infection. Their eyes get infected. Um, and a lot of times they end up dying from it if you yeah. don't treat it. And people struggle because they can't stand to see the cats sick like that. But it's very expensive to treat 50 cats or however many you have. Well, a lot of times ones like that, they're feeding them. They come to the feet, they'll come to the bowl, but they'll never let them touch them. Mm -hmm. you know, and get to that getting point. that many cats vaccinated and mm -hmm. it was just a whole lot more to it than I ever thought of as a kid but yeah I think you're confusing feral cats with like a barn cat though well Ones I've seen are, both of them I've seen know, both situations feral you know. cats have to be trapped right and then brought in right and they're not going to be happy about it but the that. but the barn cats also they had that problem too when you have yeah. a lot of cats yeah. they just keep spreading sickness around so yeah. and as a as a bird enthusiast, I'm not a fan of feral cats either. <laughs> but I, we've never seen that many of them around mm -hmm. here. And our bird population seems to be thriving. So short of finding a way to get rid of those red-tailed hawks that are still here. Uh, yeah, I heard them just a little bit ago. They were, they were ah, and flying around and everything. Um. Mama's got to chase them off. They also asked me how I felt about the, there's a program where some cities do this. They capture the feral cats and spay or neuter them and then release them back into the wild with the idea that they, they can't keep repopulating, which I don't think that's a bad idea. Um, Joe made a point that. Oh yeah. I mean, it's, it sound it sounds like a good plan, but it, I've seen some of that stuff and it's, you think about that. They got to trap all those cats the 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 manpower of doing that and what it costs for that part of it and then by the time you get vet bills for that and everything what would happen if you took that money and put it towards homelessness in some of these big cities because that's what mm -hmm. they're talking about mm -hmm. they're talking about cities that i think it's warmer climates so it's like san francisco or san diego type put that money towards something that really matters i mean the cats will take care of themselves because just like deer populations here in Iowa, you know, we have hunters and everything, but the deer will only a certain amount will make it through the winter anyway. I mean, that's, that's nature. That's, that's how it works. The deer and animals like that have not made it through the winter for lots and lots and lots of years. And it'll, and it'll take care of itself, mm -hmm. but yeah. Look at a different way to spend that money. Yeah, and I do have a big heart for the homeless yeah, population. That's, that's and Joe. I that's wish, my words. But yeah, I wish that, yeah, they would concentrate more on helping. Yeah, um, and the mental health, health issues that come with oh, it. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, that's where it all stems from. I they all like. think, you know, well, if we just give them small houses and everything. And uh, they had houses before. Mm -hmm. There's there's so many underlying issues to it. You know, mm -hmm. start, yeah. start You have to work those. on it it would have to be a one, an individual basis because you have to get to the root of the problem before you can really decrease the homeless, popula decrease the homeless population. Um, you can't put a roof over your head. It would take a lot of people working on it, and which I think there should be. Yeah, you can't put a roof over their head if you don't do something about a foundation. Right. So if mm -hmm. you don't take care of the foundation, and the issues that are underlying there, you could put any kind of roof over the top of them you want, and it's just gonna be like the three little pigs and big bad wolf's gonna come by and blow that house of straw down. Yeah. And they're gonna be in the same situation, but they were, we're getting on the so, soapbox. Yes, so we are. <laughs> so, again, that's our opinion. That's just you know? our opinion, and that's how we feel. I still love cats too. <laughs> um, Another question is, does Craig ask about Libby and Josie when they're not here? He does. Um, he asks me frequently um, 
he puts it, how are the little ones doing? Which I think is a line from something he's watched, but he generally means it because he wants me to answer him and tell him about Livy and Josie. Yeah, he wants to know what, if they haven't been here for a couple <clears throat> of days, what they're doing. You know, he's, he's <coughs> interested and, and wants to know. And a lot of it is he's wanting to know is, are they doing something that's going to affect him? Mm -hmm. and to the good, you know, like if Livy's in dance now, you know, so yeah. he's wanting to know about that because oh. then she's going to, she's in a troupe that will do a little thing at the, at the Iowa State Fair. So he's very excited about going to see that. Well, yeah. He loved going to watch Livy yeah. when she played baseball, yeah. yeah. <laughs> t-ball. T-ball, basically. Craig loved doing that. Bam so, ball, which we it. were really surprised about. Mm -hmm. Um so yeah, and then tonight Josie was here for a little bit while Libby had gymnastics. I think yes, was tonight. gymnastics right now. Um, and before when Josie was leaving, Craig had to come downstairs and say goodbye to her. Mm -hmm. So he has a very real connection to the girls. Oh yeah. Um, and let's see. What, I think the last question we'll answer is: Is Craig afraid of loud noises or specific noises? Um, he's not. Um. Actually, Craig, I don't remember Craig ever being afraid of loud noises. He will, like, if there's a loud thunder crack, clap, he'll, like, go, Whoa, like, make an exclamation. Startles him. Yeah, but he's not afraid. And a lot of times, I think, with with thunder, he, from movies and TV, you know, where, mm -hmm. in cartoons where kids jump, he just assumes that's what he's supposed to do. Because mm -hmm. it's almost when he does it, it's a little over the top. Yeah, and like it he's is. Acting. He is afraid of that, of if a storm is coming, mm -hmm. because he's afraid that it's going to affect the internet or the electricity. Yeah, yeah, honestly, because his, his echo will give him a notification that we're in a severe thunderstorm. Yeah. Watch, and and he hates nothing more than having to go to the basement. Like if there's a tornado warning. Yeah, yeah, we've had to do which it a we don't times. enjoy that either. But no. Craig really hates it. Yeah. Um. Oh well, he, there is. He, there is certain sounds that he doesn't like though there is actually um he doesn't he does not like the sound of dora the explorer yes there is tv shows yeah certain stuff like dora, that uh peppa pig for not yeah, so but, much anymore but yeah he but he's still got a he he's like still got peppa. a distaste for peppa yeah because she's just so bossy mm -hmm. that's what he says but, and he doesn't like Oh, the crying, of the, course. The Barney beginning yes. of the Barney show. But he listens Shimbari, to that on that. Shimbari. He's afraid of Ooh. Barney. Going to materialize in his room. Yeah. That's he does he not says. want us to say yeah. Shimbari, Shimbari. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I found <laughs> that him, out that, by To accident him, that's kind of like when they'd say Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. Yeah. You know? He doesn't want Barney to appear all of a sudden. <laughs> yeah. He does not want him around. <laughs> Actually, when Stephanie was little, she had... Many yeah. more noise sensitivities. She didn't like loud noises. She didn't like fireworks. She didn't like the vacuum. I mean, it didn't last a long time. It was more when she was like, I don't know, maybe up to two years old. But Craig never minded any of those things. In fact, Craig liked the vacuum. I remember that. Um, I can't think of anything else. So yep. we must be done. Yep. <laughs> um, so... We had, uh, I think we're gonna post a little video of it. Our sunroom is actually almost done. Uh, they still have to put the shingles on the roof and screens in the windows, but otherwise it looks pretty much done. So yeah, little, little trim work and everything. Of course we need to put the floor down in it. We've got some flooring yeah. to put down. Yeah, we're it. responsible for the floor and then the electrician will come and put a light fixture with a fan and then put uh, some GFI outlets on the outside of it and He'll put uh, outlets all the, on each of the walls. I will in probably there. need new furniture. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can't remember who I told that to. That <laughs> let's. I was just gonna see. I could. We could start a, uh, not a raffle. Where everybody guesses, takes a guess at which which day Nancy's gonna decide that the the outdoor furniture that we were gonna put in there was not gonna be good. See, enough. you gave me the idea. Yeah, yeah. sure. <laughs> I'm sure that. Yeah. Well, I don't think the fan's going to go with our outdoor furniture, but... No, oh, well, I can get a different fan. <laughs> but we'll see. I mean, <laughs> I'm just going to be satisfied at first with being able to sit out there, so... 
yeah. excited for it all to be done. Yeah, it's got an air, it's got a heat pump, so we got air conditioning and mm -hmm. and heating. So, yeah. So that's our excitement here. We didn't do much today um, because it was pretty hard to get out of our driveway most most of the day. Yeah, um, almost and, impossible a few times. Yeah, it's very hot here. I think today's high was 98 or 99, so it's not like I wanted to go anywhere anyway. I went and got my hair cut. I was the only one left. Yes, so Joe is no longer a hippie. I'm not quite as, I'm not quite as shaggy. <laughs> right. Um, so I guess with that, we, it's almost 20 minutes now, so oh. um, uh, we'll go on to the rest of the video and we'll see you tomorrow. Peace. Bye. Craig's taking a nap, but Libby wanted to do a taste test with jelly beans. Mm, what flavor is it? Coconut. Coconut? <laughs> <laughs> I want it to be coconut. You want it to be coconut? Yeah. Okay. You gonna try another one? Yeah. I can see again. I can see your eye. Mm. This one. <laughs> what flavor is that one? Another coconut. Another coconut? A pink coconut. A pink coconut? Yeah. <laughs> what animal do you want Craig to draw? An elephant? Okay. Just, Craig's pretty good at drawing elephants. Um, will you draw a and said, okay. Show up elephant. Okay. Blue elephant it is. Mm -hmm. Me and my big beak. <laughs> Okay, here I come. Okay, that's a blue elephant. All right, there's a blue elephant. Anything else, Livy? Yeah. What else do you want Craig to draw for you? Okay. Well, yellow won't show up very good. No, a dark yellow. Okay, if well, we have any dark yellow, maybe orange instead. No, uh, why don't that be yellow? All right. That's all right. You go, Frank. Paint or colors? Paint. Last time you used those dot markers. Well, here I am. <laughs> Good job, Craig. Well. All right. Don't mind the banging. They're building our sunroom <laughs> right outside this door here. Uh, tonight, Craig and I are going to make a recipe that Miguel sent us called Dominican style cheeseburgers. Mm -hmm. I see that we were supposed to have cabbage to put on top, which I did not realize. However, Craig wouldn't have ate that anyway. So we will be leaving. Cabbage. Yeah, we'll be leaving off the cabbage. Mm -hmm. I might've liked it though. Okay, so the first thing we have is we have some Angus steak beef burgers and this is my favorite kind of hamburger to use for burgers so we get it at walmart and it has a really great flavor craig do you want to open that up and then just put that into this white bowl here telling you a thousand zillion <laughs> trillion trillion bit uh -oh. he's not 
ground beef. So that's one pound oh. of ground beef. Oh, I'm gonna... Yeah. Right here? Mm-hmm. It's very good. Yeah. Just drop those in. No, not the paper. <laughs> Our life's being a little bit ruled right now about by the building of the sunroom. Uh, we haven't been able to leave much today because there's so mm -hmm. many cars parked in front of trucks parked in front of our house. Uh, we could. It would just be a little bit of a struggle for me getting around that. So we've been home all day, and I've also been very tired because I couldn't fall asleep last night till 3 o'clock. And they started building this morning at 6 o'clock, so I've had very little sleep. Um, but. Craig and I are going to make this recipe for today. So we pound the ground beef in the bowl. And the next thing that says to do, we need a little bowl. All right, the first thing we're going to do is make the sauce that we put on the burgers. Um, it is three tablespoons of mayonnaise or sour cream. I think we'll use the mayonnaise. What, did I get the ketchup? Yep, just put it in this little bowl. And then we need two more of those. More of those mayonnaise? No, we need two more things of ketchup like that. This one? Mm-hmm. When, when it's empty, we'll open up the new bottle of ketchup. So then we need three tablespoons of mayonnaise. Oh, boy. In the same one. How's that? Good. Two more of them. All right. Up here. We're good. I love garlic. Is it the Me secret? too. It says half a tablespoon. I think we'll just eyeball it in there because I don't mind a little extra garlic. Yeah, that's our secret ingredient. We love garlic, don't we? Right there. Mm -hmm. Yep, just pour some in there. That's good. Right here? Yeah, just pour that in there. <laughs> and then you'll need to get a little fork and mix that up. Okay, our next step is to make a paste out of the onion and the green pepper and the garlic clove. We're going to do that in our food processor. So we need you to just cut that onion up in smaller pieces if you can. And then as you go, you can just throw that in the food processor. It's that cat again. It's okay. I'll throw take care of it. Yeah, throw that in there. I'll go let her out. All right, and Craig's doing a good job chopping up that onion and putting it in our little food processor. And then um, the garlic, I've kind of already chopped up there enough, so you can put those pieces of garlic in the food processor along with that onion. And then I want you to cut the green pepper in half. Right here? Mm -hmm. ah. All right, can you do know how to get the inside out of that pepper, the seeds and everything? Yeah, I don't know how to do it. Oh, okay, yeah. here. Just cut that up into smaller pieces and we'll put it right into the food processor with the rest of the things. His voice was modeled after Paul Freeze. We yeah. need to add some salt. We're going to add some oh, salt yeah. to that too. That, uh, that, why don't we rinse that off? What's that? Why don't we that, rinse that, that off? Okay, now put it in the food. I'm okay. Surrounded by critics. I'm kind of proud that Craig chose the burger shirt for making burgers. It was a good job. A good wardrobe choice. Yeah. Okay. okay I'll next step, we need to add some salt. You add... Sprinkle it. Um, why don't you go ahead and put some in that tablespoon. That's good. At least it's not bad luck. Right. It's not There's bad no luck. Thing. I don't believe in bad luck, no. Okay, you can dump that in. 
Okay, now we just need to put the lid on the food processor. And do you know where the thing is to make it work in that drawer down there? No, it's across from you. I'll help you. All right, and here's what we're looking at. We processed all of that together, and now we will add that to our ground beef. All right, I kind of changed my mind and decided we'll mix up this uh, ground beef and the paste in the, in the mixer so we don't have to put our hands in the gush. This here? Mm-hmm, just dump that right in there. Very good. All right, we're gonna mix that up in our mixer until it's all mixed together. This has been a pretty easy recipe. It smells really good. I'm really anxious to try this. All right, so we need to also add one tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce. Hey, what you doing there, Chef Craig? I'm making burgers. All right, our next step is we are going to heat up our griddle. Um, I don't know if it says. We're just going to heat it up to 400 and see how it goes here. Should I go now? Uh, just wait a minute, Craig, okay? So we, we heat that up. And then we put the burgers on and smash them down. And we'll show you that process as it goes. And another step, we sprayed our grill, our griddle with some olive oil. We've got the burgers on the griddle. The next step is to smash them down. Do you think you want to try and just don't touch the griddle? Are you too afraid? Yeah, I'm too afraid. Okay, so we smash these down. You could also use a spatula. And then we wait for them to cook. Nice. They smell really good. I mean, it's all my favorite things. Green peppers, onions, and garlic. The burgers are done. They're very juicy when they cook. I'm really anxious to taste them because they smell so good. We're toasting our buns. I think that toasting buns is such an important step. It really heightens the flavor of your sandwich. And it doesn't really take that long to do. And Craig doesn't want to try the secret sauce, so he's having some cheese on his burger. Looks like with some ketchup and spicy mustard. We just got our Walmart grocery order, so don't mind that mess over there. Yeah, I won't mind the mess, right? Right. And we'll see how this tastes. All right. The moment of truth. Let's see how Craig likes these chimichurri burgers. I think that's what they were called. Mmm, mmm. Tastes good. Mm. Are they better than normal burgers? Yeah, sort of. Can you taste the onions and the peppers in them? Yeah, they taste like the onions and the peppers in them. Mm, I can't wait to try it. Good mm -hmm. job, Chef Craig. Mm -hmm. Here I come. What do wow. you think? I've never seen that place before. Yeah, we got windows and everything now. Yup. See, there's the, that'd be the heating and cooling huh? unit over there, so. When it's super cold outside, it'll be super warm in here. You can sit on a couch or in a chair and watch it snow. We'll put a squirrel feeder down there so we can watch the squirrels. And tomorrow they'll come back to finish it. Yep, they'll be back tomorrow. See, because they got to put screens in it. So when you...
Boy, it'd be nice. These things are nice and quiet. Listen to that. Yeah, I can see here. <laughs> yeah. Well, there'll be a screen in it, though. They'll put a screen in, so on, on days where it's really nice, we can. I still got some things to do, but right, we have to get a ceiling. Well, get a ceiling fan in, and so it's gonna be awful cool. What do you think, Craig? I need to show you the things that we got at Dollar Tree yesterday. This goes to, this was $1.25. Um, I think we only paid $1.25 for this one too. This one's ceramic. It's very cute. And then we have these lanterns. Hopefully you can see those well enough. I'm going to come around here. And these are... These are pretty cool. These are just these little things here, little projectors. And then they project those pictures on the wall. And they're very clear. So much fun. They're probably about, we have them about four feet away from the wall. And then I think I'm gonna turn off some of this stuff so you can see the one of the things better. Let's turn that off. I just want you to see this. I think this is pretty cool. And it's just this very small little projector that I have sitting on the stool that's making that pattern all over the walls. That is pretty cool for a dollar twenty-five. So Hurry on over to your Dollar Trees before all of these things get sold out. So the guy that says Happy Halloween, they also have a ghost. Uh, I didn't. I ran out of batteries, but uh, they make the same exact sounds, so it kind of redundant. But they're they're both kind of cool. Yeah, I guess I'll show you some of these things. And I showed you these things in the store, but this is the thing that uh, projected all of the pretty bats and pumpkins all over the walls and the ceilings. Yeah. And these are the little, little projectors that and projected those little scenes on the wall. Yeah, so depending on your shelf's height, you can you can actually adjust it or you can put it flat. I mean these are these are super cool finds for what a dollar. A dollar twenty five, yeah. Yeah. Between those guys and everything was a dollar twenty five. The lanterns. Yeah. Of all of it, I probably think that that cat and jack lantern that's just so retro. Mm -hmm. yeah. I love them all. Yeah. It's question time, everybody. Craig, do you like Halloween? Yes. The trick or treating, the kids and costumes, the candy. What's your favorite thing to do on Halloween? Trick or treat. Bring <laughs> kids, to children, the treats. Yeah, you like to hand out the treats. You don't really like to go trick or treating, right? Yep. Have you ever been to Halloween Horror Nights at Universal Studios? No, it's too scary. Yeah, you don't want to go to that. But we will be there during Halloween Horror Nights, but we will leave before that starts at night. Let's do the rides. Yes, we'll do the rides. We'll get to see the tribute store and all the special food for Halloween Horror Nights. And best of all, Minion Land, right? Yep. Um, what's your favorite <clears throat> holiday? Christmas. Yeah, I think that's mine too. But I like Halloween too. Who is better? Oh, Craig said he doesn't want to answer this question. So we'll skip over the Dora and Caillou question. Uh, do you like Max and Ruby? Yeah, back in my days, I used to watch one, Nick Jr. It's based on the book series starring those two lovable rabbits. <laughs> oh yeah, I forgot about that. Do you know who did their voices? Uh, no. No. Um, <coughs> have you seen <coughs> the fairy tale theater, Three Little Pigs with Jeff Goldblum as the Big Bad Wolf? Yup. I saw on Family Video. I got it from Family Video. Oh. Can you tell me a little bit about it? It's about the three little pigs build their houses of straw, sticks, and bricks. 
when the big bad wolf comes and hops pops. He wants the pork. He wants the pork. <laughs> um, can you tell us what do the Eggo Pop Tarts taste like? They taste like Eggo Raw Waffles with maple syrup. Ah, oh, you really like those, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. I thought we were going to throw those away, but Craig likes them. Yeah. This is Candace, the silver soft cat, and Pete, the mocha puppy. They came from the 2010s. Hello, Petey. Oh, huh. hi, Candace. Nice weather we're having. <laughs> Listen, I may have the weather, but it's gonna rain, you know. Oh, better get a raincoat, right? And that concludes Meet the Webkins, right? Right. This is the story of Jack and the Beanstalk. Once upon a time, there was a poor widow and her son, Jack. All they had to live on was the milk that their cow, Milky White, gave every morning. But one morning, Milky White gave no milk, and he didn't know what to do. Jack's mother told him to sell the cow. So Jack went to the market, and on the way he met a strange man who wanted to buy his cow. Jack asked, What will you give me in return of my cow? The peculiar man answered, I will give you five magic beans. Jack took the magic beans and gave the man the cow. But when he reached home, Jack's mother was very angry. She cried, You fool! He took our cow and gave you some beans! She threw the beans out the window. <laughs> Jack was very sad and went to sleep without dinner. When Jack woke up the next morning, he looked out the window and saw that a huge beanstalk had grown from his magic beans. Using the leaves and twisty vines like the rungs on the ladder, Jack climbed and climbed until at last he reached the sky. When he got to the top, he found a long winding road, long road riding its way through the clouds to a tall castle in the distance. There in the kingdom in the sky lived the giant and his wife. Jack ran up the road toward the castle, and just as he reached, reached it, the door swung open, revealed the giant's wife. Jack asked, Could you free, please give me something to eat? I am so hungry. The kind wife brought him to the kitchen and gave him some bread and milk. Jack only had, only had taken a few bites, when the whole house began to tremble with a noise of someone coming. Thump, thump, thump. Then he saw the giant. The giant was very big and looked very fearsome. Jack was terrified and the wife hit him in the pot just as the giant came inside. The giant cried, Fee, fi, fo, fum. I smell the blood of a little boy. He's dead. I'll grind his bones to make my bread. The wife replied, There is no boy in here. So the giant ate his food and then went to his room. He took out his sacks of gold coins, caught them, and put them in the side. Then he went to sleep. In the night, Jack crept out of his hiding place, took one sack of gold coins, and climbed down the beanstalk. At home, he gave the coins to his mother. His mother was very happy. The very next day, Jack climbed the beanstalk and went to the giant's house again. Once again, Jack asked the giant's wife for food, but while he was eating, the giant returned. Chomp, thump, thump, thump. Jack leapt up in fright and hid under the bed. The giant cried, Fee, fi, fo, fum. I smell the blood of a little boy. Be he alive or be he dead, I'll grind his bones to make my bread. The wife said, There is no boy in here. So the giant ate his food and went to his room. There, he took it ahead and shouted, Lay! and the hen laid a golden egg. When the giant finally fell asleep and the house shook with his snores, Jack tiptoed out of his hiding place, took the hen and climbed down the beanstalk. Jack's mother was very happy with him, for the hen would make them rich once more. After some days, Jack once again climbed the beanstalk and went to the giant's castle. For the third time, Jack met the giant's wife and asked for some food. Once again, the giant wife gave him bread and milk, while Jack was eating, the giant came home. Dump, dump, dump. 
Chat quickly hit in the war though. Fee, fi, fo, fum. I smell the blood of a little boy. Be alive or be dead. I'll grind his bones to make my bread. Cried the giant. Don't be silly. There is no boy in here. Said the wife. Say it. Don't spray it. <laughs> so the giant ate his food and went to his room. The giant took on a magical harp that could play beautiful songs. He shouted, Sing! And the harp began to play the, and lull the giant to sleep. While the giant slept, Jack snuck out of the wardrobe and grabbed the harp. Sorry, the magic cried, Help! Master! The boy is stealing! His boy is stealing me! The giant woke up and saw the giant saw Jack with the harp. What a tremendous roar! He sprang from his bed and reached the door in two strides. But Jack was too fast for him. He raced like lightning down the beanstalk and reached home. <laughs> As luck would have it, Jack's mark was outside clapping wood. Mother! Mother! cried Jack. Make haste and give me the axe. His mother ran to him with the hatcher in her hand, and Jack cut through the beanstalk in one tremendous blow. It fell to the ground with a terrible crash. The outraged giant gave a mighty bellow, but he could not reach the ground. Jack and his mother lived happily ever after. The end. And this is Craig A. Vavra saying, keep on having a great day and we'll see you tomorrow.